online as quickly as possible. Okay, so as you know, Jim Halliburton is very famously known as the HMO Daddy. And he's got a lot of property behind his belt. And he's recently, over the last 12 months, been using a strategy which has allowed him to acquire 20 properties which gross him £300,000 per annum and have actually cost him nothing. And this strategy is very straightforward and very simple to the fact that people actually just hand him keys. And more importantly, I think on the fact that the strategy which we all know as rent to rent, providing that it can be implemented correctly, can be quite a lucrative strategy to implement. And today I'm going to be sh showing you how you can do that. And the reason why I can actively fill in for Jim is because A, I've heard this a million times before from Jim, and B, is that because I also do this strategy myself too. So let's just talk about Jim. You could say that he's a lovable rogue. You either hate him or you either love him or you hate him. And he is very much like Marmite. And would you agree with that if you can just say yes or no? But more importantly, regardless of whether you hate you love him or hate him, he's also quite a clever young chap. With the owner of over 110 HMOs and with over 800 tenancies at his last count, there's not many other people in the country that you would consider to be a true expert in what he does. Now, I appreciate that Jim is not everyone's cup of tea, and I'm, uh, I'm assuming that some of you have also been on some of these HMO courses, and you either love or you hate the strategy. And I'm not here today to obviously uh, uh, to put Jim down in any way, shape, or form, because I'm a great advocate, because I believe in what he's done has been fantastic. And Jim is actually based in Darleston of the West Midlands, which is just no, just uh, just south of Warsaw of Wolverhampton. So if any of you have ever been to his properties, you'll notice that he's almost like dominated that area of the town. So today's talk is going to be very straightforward. And because Jim is still not online, it's going to be very straightforward in respect that I'm going to tell it as it is. And with your permission, I'm going to give it to a point where there's no fluff. We're not talking about any, we're not going to, and just to put it, but there's not going to be any bullshit. We're not going to talk about any of the theory. We're going to just tell it as it is. Hello. Hello. Hi, Jim. Hello. How are you doing? Welcome on board. Now, thank you for turning yeah, up. Great. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Now, I'm just going to ask everyone online, can they hear you? Can If you can just say a yes or no, that you can actually hear Jim or not. Yes, Hello. everyone's saying that they can hear you, Jim. Thank you for turning up. Great to see that your time is as good as it always is. Jim, are you with us? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Good okay. Spirit. Yeah, everyone can hear you. Uh, some people say that you got some feedback. Are you are you calling off your handset, Jim, or are you calling off your headset? I'm going on the headset now. Okay, fine. Can you hear me? I can okay. hear you. Yeah. Right. Okay, Good. brilliant. Right, Jim. I've just, given a, I've just given a basic introduction as to who you are and what you've done, saying that you've got over 110 HMOs and you've got over 800 tenants. And you're almost like this lovable rogue that you that either love you or hate you. Is that a fair is that a fair way of describing you? I think you're describing yourself. Everyone loves me, Arsh. Uh, as far as I know, uh, apart from the local authorities, they seem to have a problem with me. But uh, everyone else does. Uh, but then again, it depends on you. Okay, That's right. The Moving forward, then, Jim. Okay, so tonight I've just said that tonight's talk is not. It's going to be very straightforward to the point, and we're going to tell it as it is. We're going to talk about the yeah. real truth: how to make money from HMOs, but more importantly, how to make money from properties that people just hand you the keys. Is that right? Yep, that's right. Uh, amazing thing, but as we'll explain tonight, you can do that. Okay, so off we go.
Right, oh, there you go. Do you want me to start talking now? Yes, please. It's all. It's your yeah. show now, Jim. Okay. Thanks, Ash. Uh, right, get some basics. What is an HMO? House of multiple occupation. A lot of people don't know what it's all about, but it means a shared house. Uh, some people talk about it. Uh, uh, the, ter the technical term is a house of multiple occupation, shared house, bed sits, whatever you want to call it. And the, the, de uh, the legal definition is a house let to three unrelated people. So a family, even though it's got a lot of children, won't be an HMO. But if you say you've got a property with three, four, five, six people in who are not related, then that's what we call an HMO. N normally, what happens is you let, let the property buy the room. Is that right? Are yeah. we all clear on that? Yeah, I think we're all clear on that, Jim. So we're what's good. some of the myths about HMOs? Right. Yeah, the myths are that they uh, all need licenses, they take time, there's lots of regulations, they're expensive to set up. But like a lot of the myths, uh, there's an element of truth in them, but most it's not as bad as people make out. Uh, make out. It's very easy to learn. And everything in life has its problems. Uh, HMOs are not anyway as difficult as most people make out uh, once you're used to being a single let landlord. Uh, and as we'll see uh, in a minute, it's going to be uh, well worth the effort. Okay. So don't be put off by the negative press. Uh, you and I can walk people through it and show them how to do it without really any great difficulty. Perfect. Okay. So let, let's start moving forward there, Jim. Let's talk about your first HMO that you bought in 1991. Yeah. Uh, I was a college lecturer at the time. The college needed uh, accommodation. I'd wanted to get into property. And in those days, you didn't get all the help like we have today. Uh, such as courses, you and I asked to be able to help people explain the walk the way through on this. I bought it for uh, thirty-five thousand uh, in 1997. It was valued at three fifty, three hundred fifty thousand. It took a bit of hit after the recession, but it's probably getting back up to that kind of price now. But the most important part, and this is gobsmacking, even I cannot believe my good luck. It's now grossing thirty-six thousand pounds per annum. Even if you're a liar for expenses and all the rest of it, that is still a reasonable income. I think most people would be rather happy with that um, as a basic. So you hope to aspire for a bit more. So one property and in, in effect 20 years uh, sets you up for life. Okay, so t just talk us about it then, Jim, very briefly, because I don't want to talk too much about yeah. the standard HMOs. I understand. Uh, what you do is let by the room. Instead of letting the whole house, if you, if you get the right property, you split it up, you can gross about four times the um, gross rent, but the more importantly, it's what you're left with as the net rent once you're taken off expenses, because it costs the same to run a single let as it, as it does an HMO pretty well. Uh, depending on how you do it, your model, there's no extra cost. Uh, my model, I pay for utilities. But even take into account the utilities, you're left with a phenomenal uh, difference in the income. And uh, at the end of the day, you're left with a good seven times uh, the income that you would do from a single let. Depending on the area, it depends on the rents, but the usual rule is you get three to five times the gross rent, and you get something like five to ten times the net rent. And it's what you're left with that's so uh, important. But it gets even better than that, Arsh. You have the advantage that you can take properties that would not be suitable for family lets or single lets because of various reasons the properties are not very attractive, they're uh, not in the right position, they're right in the town centre, they're next to pubs. In fact, uh, my tenants would be very keen to live next to a pub or even over a pub, uh, not too far to go. It, it's the ideal for single people. Uh, and that's mainly who live in HMOs, it's not family dwellings, uh, they will live in HMOs and they like it usually to be within a town centre. If you're having any generalisation, keep close to the town centre and because you're getting higher income, you're able to help out uh, people who are struggling with their mortgages uh, as such. So you're bringing into use uh, a, a wider range of property, offices, 
no one would want to live in a well unless the property was uh, desirable an ex office an ex pub um, shops uh, shops or flats above shops town centre probably limited parking but ideal for a single person okay Ash right okay oh, yeah. so how did you get most of your HMOs then Jim yeah uh, I bought them <laughs> that's the, the way I got a, uh, the, the first hundred or so uh, I went out and bought. Using the old fashioned way, you, I bought the property, turned it into an HMO, and this is the amazing thing. A lot of people find great difficulty, Arsh, in understanding this. You cannot uh, value HMOs on two uh, ways one on the bricks and mortar, the, the second is on the income. Most commercial property is valued on the income it produces, and you take, say, uh, just to keep it simple. Uh, if it produces 30k and in the area the HMOs are said to be uh, fetching 10% then you take 10 times the income. Now that can be a lot more than the, the bricks and mortar value. Properly set up HMO running can be valued on its income and investors will buy it as a, a going concern. Just as you would a shop, a pub, a warehouse, it has a value on the income. And that allows you quite often to be able to buy a property, convert it into an HMO, and get most, if not all, your money out. That's really quite the amazing thing about HMOs. People think you need a lot of money to get into it. You may need money to buy it, but you get that money back. So if you can bridge uh, or use other methods of obtaining finance, like JVs, uh, you've got rich investors or friends, you could buy the property, turn it into an HMO, get your money out. And that's how I acquired got to remember I started as a college lecturer I didn't have any money and yet I managed to acquire all these HMOs by the simple expedience of buying a property turning it into an HMO and then revaluing it on income simple okay as so what does, great, the old, what does the old way involve then well yeah the old way involves the usual thing of taking the risk you've got to pay the solicitors fees the valuation fees lenders fees and uh, it hurts even now uh, Ash you have the problem of being gazumped, losing the deal, and then losing the fees. Uh, there's a time, the stress, um, and then you've got to be able to mortgage the property to get your money back out, um, and you own the property. So that's good uh, uh, in being able to own the property, because if you own the property, that enables you to, when property prices go up, or you increase the value of the property. So if I take a property and say it has a 20k income, that would, uh, and if it was valued on, uh, say, 10%, then that would be valued at 200k. If I could add value to that property by, say, putting an extension on, or put billboards on, or get more uh, rooms out of the same property, and it's now valued at 30k, that's added, added another 100k to its value. You could remortgage that, and money that's borrowed is not taxable. I'll repeat that. If you borrow the money, you don't pay tax on it. So you can cash out on the property. Uh, and that's tax free. Okay, you've got to pay the loan on that, but if you get any additional income from the property, it can afford it. So that's the great beauty. I often look at people who talk about flipping properties. When I say you can keep the property and make money on it, a bit like having a cake and eating it. Isn't that amazing, Ash? It is indeed, yeah. But okay, so we've, and, talked about, we've talked about the old way, Jim, which is not what we're here to talk about. One no, of the new ways no. is also joint ventures. Do you do joint ventures? I do, yes. Um, what I do is I, I've got enough properties in my name, so I don't want to be uh, buying any more properties. So I'm quite happy to help other people who do want to get into the business. I will acquire the properties in my area. I'll organize the renovation and uh, we'll let it out, look after it all. It's a complete hands-off package. This is outside the FSA regulations that people, uh, a lot of people talk about because the JV investor is buying the property in their name and I help them do go through the process. I'm a lo lovely person like that. Great great way of doing it. Okay. Well, we are here to talk about the new way, aren't we, Ash? We are indeed. <laughs> and the new way is where you get hold of properties, it's sometimes referred to as rent to rent. Uh, this is where you take a property off usually an existing landlord and then you re-rent it by the room. There's nothing illegal on this. You make it known to the owner, I've got you, who's fed up with the property and running it themselves, 
because you know how to let the property as an HMO, you're conversant with the rules, you know how to convert the property safely, you understand all the local authority regulations, etc. A side landlord usually is fairly fixed, they just want to let it to one family. You can take that family house and let it say to six people. And the as I said right at the beginning, you can increase the gross rent by four or five times by doing this, by letting it by the room, and the net rent could be five to ten times more than you would do as a single let. So you can afford to pay the landlord a reasonable rent on the property and make some money yourself. So it's a, uh, a lovely like car hire, you take the, buy the car from the manufacturer and you rent it out and make an income. Now to do this, it's a lease. You, you, you're leasing the property from the owner, you're not taking an AST. So you take a lease out on the property and sublet it. It's just understanding how to do this. And uh, we're going to be saying a bit later, are we, Ash, about the course we're going to be running fairly soon, which goes through the details of this. We're just giving you a taste of it up tonight on the webinar. And you can have ask questions about it uh, uh, if you've got any questions uh, regarding this. But it works. I've done uh, well over 20 uh, of rent to rents. And that's even though I own properties. The rent to rent is such a simple way of doing things. Uh, we uh, put together a deal for this. And uh, I can see you're talking about you can uh, put this, uh, how we can do this course. Perhaps I'll ask you could talk people through the course we're doing. It's a really exciting course. I'm going to looking forward to uh, participating and running, running with Harsh. Uh, showing people how to go about doing themselves. Okay, well, I'm not going to talk, talk too much about it because people aren't here to talk really understand about courses. But one thing that we are offering is that if people don't want to come on a course, you know, we're, we're doing something quite innovative where you can actually learn from your own home um, with the assistance of mine and Jim. So if you, if you don't want to come on a course, first thing that you can do is potentially just purchase all the literature directly from us, which includes the call the course material, uh, and also Jim's HMO manual, as well as the lease that Jim asks all his landlords to sign, and that's only four fifty. But again, we've got so much more yet to tell you. We are going to be telling you about the real truth, what we Good. ask landlords, and what we require off landlords. And the one thing that I'm going to say just before Jim butts in here is, is that you've got to understand what what you want from the property, how much you're willing to pay. I've seen so many people, and I'm sure Jim has, seen lots of people that have offered over the odds for the property on the basis that they're going to make money from it. But there's so many properties out there, Jim, would you agree, where landlords are willing to just give you the keys. Is that correct? Absolutely right. Not only are they willing to give you the keys, but they'll give you a rent-free period. So you 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 have the uh, the property you can then turn it into an HMO and get it let before you have to even be paying the rent to the landlord. Uh, there, there are so many people who are just fed up with their property, fed up with the business uh, of being a landlord, that they'll hand the keys over to someone else. It's amazing, uh, but true. Okay, so what, what about the, uh, let's talk about the heads of terms or the draft lease. Right, yeah, I find from experience in, in this business, uh, that you really need to get the agreement sorted out uh, and clearly set out. I've got a very simple agreement that I find works. I tried to do it uh, initially going through solicitors and you run into negativity with solicitors. They're always looking at the angle, the uh, difficulties that can arise. They take too long and people lose interest. So if you can get the deal sorted out straight away, there's nothing to stop you going to solicitor. Uh, afterwards and get it, uh, a more formal agreement if that's what your people wish but uh, I, I, to get it to work get your heads of agreement or I use the, uh, the actual contract to uh, get the, uh, the thing going and if people want to they can take it to the solicitors and check it out but it saves the problem of them coming to go to solicitor and get an, an agreement drawn up makes things work when I tried, started doing this I went to solicitors and all that happens is the deals fell apart. Uh, so if you want to do this, I suggest you get your agreement. We're happy to provide you a copy of the agreement if you come on the course or you want to buy the course materials. 
but it's such an easy way to make money. You don't need finance. You don't need. You don't own the property. There's little acquisition costs in carrying this out, but you've got to know what you're doing, and that's what we can show you uh, how to do this from the course material, or if you come on the course. So it's a great way of going ahead. Okay. okay. Even Ash, you're, you're catching up rapidly with with me in the number of properties you've acquired following this uh, method, haven't you? Yeah. So I've been doing it since May 2013, and I've acquired 14 yeah. properties since May. That's Good grief, May 2013. You're doing more than one a month. Yeah. So, wow. and so in that respect, very easy. Once you've understood how to how to approach a landlord, uh, more importantly, understand what they're after, and create this so-called win-win situation, Jim. Mm. There's no reason why you. you can't make a lot of money out of it. But more importantly, it's cost you nothing to acquire the properties. But what's the That's advantages right. of it? Well. Uh, the advantages of doing this is, as I uh, pointed out, it's it's an easy way to make money, but it's not uh, a lazy way to make money. I don't, uh, you've got to know what you're doing. You don't need the finance. You don't need to be credit uh, credit worthy. Uh, you don't because uh, you, you're not buying the property. You're just renting a property from the owner and then re-renting it out. So it keeps the cost down of the acquisition and acquiring. So it's a, a great way of going about things. And the starting point, I'd say, is the agreement. Technically, you don't need a written agreement, strange enough, but I always have a written agreement to go ahead and do this. Uh, there's few costs involved in acquiring your properties uh, because you're not buying. So you haven't got the valuation fees, you haven't got the legal costs involved, you haven't got the risk of being gazumped uh, and losing money on this, uh, and all the rest of it. You just make a simple deal. It's a bit like renting a property if you're going to uh, rent as a tenant, except you are renting with the intention of re-letting it, and you make this claim to the owner. This is not some uh, underhand trick that you take properties off people and then re-let them. You're, t uh, you're taking properties from people, generally tired landlords sometimes, people who can't sell the properties, people who have a property and want to keep it, but don't want to sell it, but they don't want to be... A, uh, have the problem of being a landlord because lots of people are scared about being landlords so you can acquire the properties uh, you'll find in my agreement I put in a break clause so you're not tied in for a long time period you can uh, walk away if it doesn't work a bit like Ash you've done 14 properties I've done over 20 uh, properties I've never walked away from a deal yet that I've taken on I may have not taken on the deal because the property is not suitable but once I've taken it on, uh, I find everything in property seems to have uh, silver linings, properties, uh, rent. They may not be as uh, profitable or uh, quick to rent as I thought, but I d I've never had to uh, give the property back because it hasn't worked. So you, And the big advantage is a lot of people out there have uh, damaged their credit rating and would never be able to get a mortgage. So they think they cannot get into property. This is a way of getting into property by renting the property to start with, and there's nothing to stop you, and this is not generally known, Ash, you, you could rent it, but also agree to have the right to buy the property. That makes it a lease option. So you have the right to buy the property uh, sometime in the future, perhaps when your credit rating is better, when finance is better. You just need to know the techniques, skills, and knowledge to be able to do this. So a bit of back to school, uh, we can teach you the uh, pretty well the essentials of it in the one day. Uh, it's not horrendously complicated to be able to do this. Uh, the real holdback is yourself not believing that you can do it. And yet you've got two examples here uh, of people being able to do it. I say I've acquired over 20 properties that have a market value of over £3 million. They give a, a net income after you take off the rent and the cost of the utilities of over 300000 and all the properties have cost me nothing. Uh, I haven't had to buy them. So I'm just doing what other people uh, don't want to do. And I haven't really put tremendous effort into it. I just trips over this uh, after the uh, recession when I stopped buying properties, looked, looking around and came across lots of other properties. Uh, so, would you, uh, uh, the listeners like to hear about some of the property 
I'll be able to get for nothing. Yeah. Just, yep, right, uh, just okay. so that you can tell us that we're not getting many questions, Jim, so I'm assuming that either listening in really tentatively or the falling asleep, mm-hmm. would you mind just letting us know whether you find this useful or not? How many of you? Okay. We get a few. Right. Yes. Good, good. Okay. So here are the kind of things we've uh, managed to do. Uh, or I've, I've acquired one property there. Um, I got, I've got all of them for nothing. Uh, new road, just a terrace house, uh, makes a phenomenal amount of income, £16,000 per annum. Uh, I remember when we come to assess this income, I'm taking, it grosses somewhere near 30000 I've got to pay the owner the rent, I've got to pay the utilities out of this, so after I've done all this, I'm left with 160. I've also got the right to buy this property for £135,000. That is the market value of the property, probably a bit high because I could buy it any time within the five years uh, that I have uh, a period of five years in which to exercise this option to be able to buy that. Okay. Um, go on. So uh, the next slide talks about what income means. Yeah, right. Well, when I was saying, when I make 16000 you've got to be clear about the terms. What is profit? What is gross rent? What do, you, what do you need to appreciate? It's what you're left with. So if I'm getting thirty k from New, New Street, I've got to pay the rent, and I've got to pay the utilities on that. And then that's what I call the income. But uh, remember, you've still got to take into account out of the income, maintenance goes up and down, voids, you don't know how many tenants you'll have at any particular time, and also some people don't pay the rent. So 16000 isn't necessarily what I'm left with, uh, it's, it, it's certainly that's the most I could make out of it, uh, I probably net uh, a few thousand less. Here's another simple little property, I like to use this property as a good example because you have the neighbours on the left are the kind of neighbours I want, no neighbours, uh, the, the other side had no, uh, uh, it's boarded up, it's an uh, empty house, it's been left empty for years by the owner, well the owner is uh, the public owner who takes it, the owner there and on to seem to leave these things empty for a while, uh, and I, I'm able to let that one out and make a reasonable income out of it, 12,000, how many, uh, how many of those would you need just to be able to be financially independent? And it's not particularly hard to do it. And then example number three, this is amazing. This was an existing HMO, an 18 bed HMO, and I'm making somewhere in the region of 50,000 out of it. Uh, again, an owner who just couldn't cope with it, he felt he'd bitten off too much, uh, more than he could chew. I took it over, uh, it's what I call one of my mega HMOs, 18 bed HMO, uh, all en suite, and it works very well, uh, as you can see. So, no brainer there. This is just a little flat. Uh, I don't have the ground floor, I don't get the signs. Example four is just a little flat, and that's still making uh, in the region of £9,000 after paying the landlord and the utilities. So, uh, fairly uh, simple. It doesn't have to be complicated, it doesn't have to be big. Uh, I'm surprised that uh, I can make so much out of such a little property, and yet uh, my favourite is pubs, ex-pubs, uh, they have uh, lots of potential to be had, uh, this makes, and just renting the top floor, so you haven't any planning issues, the top floor is already res- residential, uh, so uh, you're uh, entitled to let that uh, and multi it because it's an existing flat, and then you've got the ground floor which is even bigger, which I could convert and probably will get round to converting into uh, rooms and that would increase the income considerably uh, w- uh, but it still takes a little bit of cash to put in to get that because you have to uh, bring it up to standard, make sure it's safe, comply with building regulations uh, and other criteria and also get the, uh, co- uh, cover the planning issues involved in it. Are we okay with that Ash? Yeah, sure. Are we clear? Yeah, so you you've got the potential to increase the income to thirty nine thousand pound at a cost of twenty thousand pound. Yeah, about twenty thousand pounds to convert the down, uh, ground floor into uh, rooms. But you got to get the planning permission to do that and the building control and make sure it complies with the housing standards regulations. 
Okay, well, Jim, I think we're a little bit ahead of schedule. So we're going to, uh, if it's no okay, problem. just answer a few questions. Of course, of course. Right, okay. So um, where do we begin? Someone asked, does it work in all towns and cities? Uh, I don't know because I don't work in every town and city. Uh, I should. Uh, the key to all is the cost of the rent. If you're in central London, I know it's not going to work because the rental costs are so high and also the property property values are very high. I'm told uh, some areas up north the uh, idea of living together, uh, men living together to share the house is not considered very macho and a bit suspect. And, and uh, on the other side, HMOs really come down to is there a shortage of accommodation? If there's a shortage of accommodation, HMOs work. Because HMOs are really just a product of shortage of accommodation. Uh, I don't think anyone would say they would rather just live in a room. Most people want their own flat if they could afford it, but if they can't afford it, they're content to take a room because uh, it's what's affordable. So I think uh, I haven't heard of where it won't work unless you just price out the market because the uh, rents are so high. But okay. until you try it, you don't know. Okay, well, Tony has asked. How did you find the properties? Mm -hmm. uh, strange enough, uh, it's not finding the properties, is are you receptive to taking the property? This is a rather difficult concept that uh, a lot of people just can't get asked. Uh, it's not can you find them, is are you ready to take advantage of the opportunity? Once you're ready to take advantage of the opportunity, you will find the properties because they'll be there. It's a bit like, have you seen a pink car? Well, no. But when you're driving home tonight, you'll spot a pink car because you're looking for it. You're uh, attuned to that concept. So if you know how to do it, you know what you want, that you, you will find it. Yes, we can talk about approaching letting agents, uh, estate agents, advertising, and all that kind of thing. I don't do that. I just know what I want, and as soon as the idea uh, the idea of property arises I find it. How do you find your properties Ash? Believe it or not Jim it's uh, a lot of landlords that are just uh, they approach me and you've got to become that person regardless of whether you're looking to do rent to rent or whether you're looking for any is it fair to say Jim that anything that you do in property you've got to almost become like that authority in your area that person That's to bad. go to certainly helps doesn't it uh, it, that's how it works for you uh, that doesn't uh, uh, that sounds good to me it's uh, uh, I, uh, as I say you, you got the authority but also you're aware of the opportunity Jim shall, all, shall I give uh, away shall I give away a little tip tonight yeah that's a good idea okay here's a little tip now you want you may want to write this down if you haven't got a pen and paper, we are recording this as well, by the way, so we will be sending out in the morning. But here's a little tip. If you want to start doing this strategy straight away, remember, it's not so much about getting the properties. It's more about how you get the landlord around to your way of thinking. But if you want to start thinking about generating properties, every area has got a newspaper. Now, in the back of a newspaper, most properties, uh, most newspapers have got a section called accommodation to let. And in there, you've got landlords as well as agents who advertise their properties. But what what I did and what I started out to do is that I either put an advert out in the paper or I used to just text all the landlords. I said, hi, I noticed you've got a property to let. Uh, is it still vacant? Would you be interested in a five-year or would you be interested in someone taking a five-year lease on it? You watch the response that you get. Mm. So there's tip number one, but more importantly, it's now about understanding what to do if they turn around to you and say, yeah, okay, I'm interested, now what do we say to them? And that's exactly what we teach on some of the workshops, is that correct, Jim? That's absolutely right. Getting in front of the landlord is one thing, them. bringing them around to your way of thinking is a completely different different thing and it's exactly the same with like a, a below market value deal if you're looking to purchase a property if you get direct in contact with the vendor that's the best situation that you could ever be in 
But now, once you're in front of the vendor, what do you say to them in order to be able to steal the deal? And it's exactly the same with the rent to rent. And that's what we teach you. We've got a workshop on Saturday, the 5th of April. And what we look at is which kind of top, uh, which type of properties to look for and those to leave, where to find them, how to approach the owner, and what to say, and more importantly, what not to say to the owners. And the paperwork to okay. use to seal the deal. Now. Very good. Jim, normally, if you if you were to go on my website, which is www.arshilahi.com, and if you look at the events page, you'll notice that that's on for four nine seven. And mm -hmm. alternatively, you know, we we're more than happy for people to come to our workshops, but we appreciate that sometimes time can be a bit of a constraint. Do you agree, Jim? It is. Yes. Okay. So what we start special there, Arsh. Yes, we've got something extremely special because there's another couple of options for you where you may not want to come on a workshop, but you may just want, let's just say, for argument's sake, the agreement, which is worth its weight in gold anyway. You can mm. buy the agreement as well as all the course material for only 450 But hang on, stop there, because we've come up with another innovative idea, something that we thought of only over the weekend where... If you don't want to come on a course, if you don't want to come and sit in a classroom and listen to me and Jim, you can actually learn everything that you need to know about rent to rent from the comfort of your own home. We're going to be doing what we call a live course streaming session where me and Jim will be presenting to you on a day long webinar. The week before, we'll be sending you all the course materials so that you can print out so that you can follow through with us. And you can be enjoying all the content and the teachings from what you would normally get from the classroom just by being in your own property. More importantly, you get to interact with us by asking us questions live. It's exactly as though you are sitting with us, but you're at home. And we appreciate that sometimes distance can be a bit of an issue, time can be a bit of an issue. So we'll also record the whole session. And we'll send you a recording so that when you're going out and you're touting for your landlords, you're touting for the, and what to, and you're trying to understand what to say, but sometimes you may have forgotten what to say. You can play back the recording, which you'll have at your disposal, so you don't have to flick through all your notes. Just play back the recording and understand what me and Jim have said, and you can have that for only two nine five. So let's just recap. You can either you're more than welcome to come and purchase and come and see me and Jim in person at our office in Wolverhampton for 495 you can just purchase just the course material for 450 and you get access to me and Jim for a bit of consultation or finally you can sit in your own in the comfort of your own home and stream the whole session for 295 all the information for all these courses is on www dot arshilahi.com I've also, also left my personal mobile number there so if there's any questions you're more than welcome to come back to me or you can email me but we'd like to think that there's lots of ways of, for you to make money from property there's a standard buy to let strategy where you go and you put a deposit down for 25% but I appreciate that not everyone's got not everyone's got a, uh, a bottomless a pit of cash. Jim, have you got a bottomless pit of cash? I only wish I had, Arsh. Uh, can I just come back and uh, emphasize this idea of the streaming approach is probably almost the first. Uh, that, uh, Arsh is, it's Arsh's idea. I, I can't take credit for it. The idea of being able to stream it so people can uh, watch it, a bit like Open University. You can watch it from the comfort of your own home, but still have the ability to interact with those of us in the classroom. That is really quite an amazing uh, and first uh, in this uh, industry to do. So a great idea to uh, do do that. So not only are we fairly uh, we're innovative in the idea of being able to uh, acquire properties without having to have money to do this, but still make money from it, 
but uh, forefront in the way of teaching this. Well done, Ash. No, well, like I said, we're, I want to be able to teach as many people this strategy as possible. And mm. Sometimes when you go to courses, you have to stop over in hotels, and I appreciate that's an added cost. Some of you have got family commitments and you can't commit a whole weekend. I appreciate that. So now, for a lot of the courses that we'll be holding personally, a lot of it will be through a live streaming session. So are there any other questions before me and Jim start to start to wrap this webinar up? Because it's the first time ever, Jim, that I think we've ever finished on time. I see. It's, it's very good. I'll be able to have an early bath, as they say. But it's uh, fantastic. So if any questions before we go, uh, please ask. We're happy to answer them. Okay, well, uh, good. Let's ask a question. Who's responsible for the repairs? Is it the owner or is it the tenant? Right. Well, it, it's, a, it's an agreement that you can negotiate. So it's your choice. Uh, I certainly, one of the selling points I say to people is I will carry out all the repairs. The structural repairs are left with the owner, and that's usually covered by the insurance anyway. But uh, the, uh, one of the great attractions of doing a rent to rent with me is I cover all the maintenance and repair. Uh, you, uh, the owner has a guaranteed income. I'm responsible for the voids. I'm responsible for the bad debts, and there's no agency fees to pay. Also, so you, you can do this. But if you want, you can pass. The repairs back to the owners or some of the uh, repairs. It's whatever deal you want to uh, negotiate or you feel comfortable with. Okay. Well, Martin's asked the question at what period do you insert the break periods? Right. Um, I, st I, I put in a very short break uh, clause. I said uh, I could uh, have a break clause of four weeks. And the reason I did this is when I first started doing it, uh, I was offered a lot of properties that I didn't really want. Um, I wasn't sure they'd be able to let. So uh, when you take on a property, you're going to take it on a long-term period. You've got to be uh, happy that you'll be able to let it. Now, I'd been, in effect, operating in a particular way, uh, buying certain types of properties in certain areas. Then when I was offered properties outside my area, I wasn't sure. So I said, if you want me to take this property, uh, I want a short break. Uh, period. Uh, but then, surprise, surprise, I began to find that uh, a lot of uh, properties that I wasn't sure about all turned out to be good. So, uh, again, it's negotiable. Some people put break clauses in, others don't. So, it's like, it's how long is a piece of string? Okay. And put them in after a year. One of the last few questions that we've got is uh, someone's asked, do you have to check whether the owner's mortgage allows them to sublet, Jim? Yes, that you should uh, you should do that. That is a requirement. Uh, it's a contractual obligation for the owner, uh, and lenders vary tremendously. Uh, some, uh, especially uh, owner occupiers who are struggling, who uh, cannot uh, sell their properties, but say have to move because of the work. The lenders are often very flexible, uh, rather than uh, pushing the owners into ne negative equity will uh, allow you to do this. Buy to let lenders on the whole tend to be fairly positive. It's a different approach, but you have to check with the lenders um, to see what their attitude is. Okay. I think that we've finished all the questions as well, Jim. Okay, great. So um, well, on that, on that note, again, if we'd just like to reiterate that we uh, all, the, all the course materials that we're offering is on my website, which is arshilahi.com. Um, and on that note, we'd like to wish you a very early good evening. And good evening from me. Jim, uh, thank you very much for, for finally turning up. Yes. I th at, one point, I, at one point, I thought I was going to have to act as Jim Halliburton. Goodness me. Yes, that's frightening, I thought. Sorry about that. Bit of a technical hit, which i uh, trying to get a hold of it. So I hope it didn't cause any problems. Thanks, okay. Arsh. Uh, Brilliant. Give me a call when you're finished. Can you? Okay. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to wish you uh, a very good evening. Thank you very much for your time. And we look forward to speaking to you very soon. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.